renting a 4x4 and road tripping on our own through central Mongolia may have been the best decision we've made since coming to this country. On day one of this road tripping journey, we got shooed out of a national park <gasps> by a swarm of bees. We were scared. We escaped the bees. We started landing on my hands and on my phone. Found the most incredible camping spot. Adopted a baby goat. Oh, this is not a problem I ever expected to have. There's a goat stuck under the car. And witnessed more of Mongolia's unmatched beauty. In this video, we're reminded of why we chose to travel to Mongolia in the first place. The vast landscapes and uninhabited places make every minute of this road trip an adventure. So if you ever need a alone time, Mongolia, you guys. Mongolia is a place to go. <laughs> there is enough space here to have all the alone time you want. It just feels like utter chaos because there's no lanes or anything like that oh and gosh. everybody's for themselves. You got like three lanes of traffic going this way, three lanes going that way, people up over there, a Prius just booking it down. Oh Where are we going? <laughs> but having the opportunity to create this adventure for ourselves and go at our own pace are some of the best parts of traveling independently in this extraordinary country. So strap in because we are about to start the second half of this overlanding journey with the most incredible wake up call of our lives. Good morning. We are having a hard time getting out of bed this morning because it is so nice in the tent. We've got a beautiful view at our feet. The birds are tweeting. It's the perfect temperature in here. I don't want to leave. Well, it is safe to say that this is one of the most magical mornings of my whole life. Like, we've just gotten out of the tent, gotten ready for the day, the camels are still here grazing. So I've just been like watching them pull all the leaves from the tree. And it looks so funny because when they pull the leaves from the tree, it's like they're doing yoga. Like their back legs like straighten and they lean forward a bit. It's so funny to watch. And then they yank these parts of the tree down. They're just so, so cool to watch. And I honestly, I feel like I've never been in like a more Mongolian scene in my whole life than I am right now with this rooftop tent and the camels, with the sand dunes, the mountains, and the green bushes everywhere. Like, what a cool morning. I don't think I've ever had such a peaceful morning. First the camels and cows, and now there are some horses. It makes starting breakfast really hard, but we should really start breakfast. So finding something to eat here that was gonna be like quick and easy on the road was actually really hard. So we got, what did we get, like wheat something? I think it's just instant oatmeal. Is it? Yeah. Oh! Wow. The texture's weird. It's like gooey. Maybe put too much water. But. Maybe not enough? This is way sweeter than I thought it was gonna be. But yeah, it actually, it's really sweet. Mm. We, we almost bought brown sugar so that we can add it to it and make it even better, but we don't actually need it at all. Well, yeah, you can only get like one kilo bags of brown sugar, so we decided not to, but this is so sweet. This is actually pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. You should see this. Come here. Wow. Holy, they are just loving it. 
Oh my gosh. They are some thirsty sheep, man. Go get your water, guys. Has it been days? Wow, that's so cool. Wow. Are they with us, Shepherd? So they're by themselves. Wow, they just came from up the hill by themselves, booking it for the water. Smart sheep. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the most wildlife rich warnings camping I've ever had. <laughs> and, and we haven't moved. And we haven't just even been moved. here the whole time. If you told me, if you asked me before what Mongolian camping is like, I would have a, had no idea it would be anything close to this. Yeah. I thought it would just be vast expanse and just plains and emptiness, but this is anything but that. Yeah, we're like literally looking at a bunch of camels right now with a bunch of goats behind them. Sheep? Sheep and goats. Wild, that's wild. Okay, so we slept next to the dune all night, but we weren't actually here. Yeah. <laughs> so, we've come to the sand dunes, and holy smokes, are they cool. They're so interesting because there's like these rolling big dunes in the middle of like the mountain and the field. And then, in the middle of some of them, there's like these big green lush trees, like coming up from the sand. And I never would have thought sand was like fertile enough to have trees. trees. <laughs> but yeah. these ones are, I guess, or the sand is. This area is very different than the Gobi Desert yeah. that we saw last time because it just seems so like there's so much more life here. But it is still very much a proper desert. Yeah. Like there's a ton of sand. It does feel very dry out here. Proper sand in. And I think if you got lost, well, maybe you'd be all right. Yeah, you'd be all right. <laughs> you'd be all right out here. So I know a lot of people come here if they don't have time to go to the Gobi Desert and see the big sand dunes there. Uh, and I think this is an awesome alternative. Like if you don't have the time to go super far south, this is still pretty cool. All right, just like that, we have left the sand dunes behind. We are on our way to a city called, we're pronouncing it Karakorum. I'm not exactly sure the correct way to pronounce it. Um, it's about an hour away. It is the ancient old capital here in Mongolia. And then after that, the plan is to head a little bit further off-roading to a nearby lake, which is where we hope to pitch the tent for the night. Yeah, we can say pitch the tent, right? Even though it's above us, <laughs> pitch the tent. So if you ever need a alone time, Mongolia, you guys. Mongolia is the place to go. <laughs> there is enough space here to have all the alone time you want. It's funny because the road just goes on forever, it seems like, in front of us and behind us. And still I don't can't see another car. Nobody. Nope. Yeah, if you need to get away from everything, I would definitely vote Mongolia. I think what's I find really unique about it is that where we come from, we have lots of plains in Western Canada but it's usually all farming fields and yeah. crops and all the land is usually it's, utilized yeah, it's being used. for some reason. But here, it's just wide, empty, wild fields. Yeah, with, with livestock occasionally. Livestock, yeah. So I mean, the land certainly is being used in some spots, but there is just so much of it. I feel like even though there's like 4 million sheep here, you just can't possibly use it all. Oh my gosh! There are so many sheep and goat in front of us. Oh my gosh, look at this. They're not even moving, they're just like congregating on the street. Alright, try and move them. That's what we got. Sorry guys. Excuse us goats. Excuse us sheep. You're all so cute, I'm sorry. Guys, toot toot. Excuse us. Guys, you're in the way. We're driving here. Yeah. Smacking the car? Someone is. I, I feel like someone's hitting the car. Like one of the goats is headbutting us? Yeah. Excuse us. 
Jess. Sorry. Hey, Jess. Oh, wow. I really feel like we really disrupted them. <laughs> what were they doing? Like, what were you guys doing? There's so many of them. Hold on to the middle of the road. <laughs> Just like dead center. Okay, nice job. Not hurting any goats. Yeah, I don't think so, but I swear I heard something ramming in our car, so we might have to check <laughs> afterwards. I'm sure it was ramming, and it's not me running over anything. No, they, all seem pretty, like, yeah. they, they all seem pretty aware of the car. So we made it to, I guess, our second stop of the today. Mm -hmm. This is the ancient city of Karakoram. Yeah. We actually thought about going here uh, from Ulaanbaatar just as like um, a separate trip with uh, by via local bus, but we decided to actually make it part of this route of our little adventure around central Mongolia because it just kind of made sense. So Karakoram is actually the ancient capital city of Mongolia. It sounds like, from what we understand, Chinggis Khan came here towards the end of the later years of his life uh, and set out this place to be like this big booming city. He died before it was the capital city, um, but it was once like one of the biggest cities in the entire world when the Mongol Empire was like at its peak and that's what makes it such a cool tourist attraction. Nowadays, the city itself is mostly in rubble. Yeah, the, yeah, well the particular area of like where the main city was, there yeah. is an actual ta like, town of Karakoram yeah, here. still existing And today. it's like very much pretty like um, bustling modern. and modern. Yeah. But here in like the ruins part, there is not that much. We also learned that Chinggis Khan rallied his troops here before one of his really big battles. And uh, from what I can see so far, there is plenty of land to rally troops. So if I was rallying any troops in particular, Right in the middle of uh, lots of green hills is probably the place to be. I'm not exactly sure why he picked this place in particular, but um, what is cool is that this place ended up becoming the capital of one of the largest empires in the world. And now, in fact, also one of the largest cities in the world at the time. Yeah. I think something that made this place really important as well is it was right along the Spice Route. What is it called? Spice, Spice Road. Road. <laughs> it was right along the Spice Road. So that's part of the reason this city became so important for so long. So we're in Erinzut Monastery right now, which is like probably the most like built up part of the entire city, um, like the leftovers of the city here. It's this beautiful temple complex. I guess what's really notable about this, these temples in particular, is that they were built in the late 1500s and it's thought to be potentially the oldest Buddhist monastery um, that still exists today in all of Mongolia because most of them were destroyed um, during the communist period. This one was partially destroyed, but it was in the end saved. And because this is likely the oldest monastery in all of Mongolia, many Buddhist Mongolians make it their mission to come here at least one time in their life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that kid's gonna be like six? Yeah, it looks like his dad was uh, helping him practice his horseback riding. That's so cool. That was amazing. That kid was going and so incredible. The people out here, they're just so talented with the horses and the animals. Well, we have officially left the nice pavement. We've got 22 kilometers left to our destination, which is Oogie Lake. Um, I think it's gonna be slow going ooh, with lots of animals. <laughs> that was a cow who almost ran into the road. Disturbed his nap. <laughs> Welcome to Oogie Lake. We've arrived. Mm. Smell that. It smells like lake. <laughs> it's so weird to see like a, such a large body of water after 
going around the desert for a long time and even just being yeah. around the plains over this these past two days here. Two days? This lake is humongous. Like it is sprawling. I can't see where it ends. There are lots of people here like using the lake, people camping, people swimming, which is really cool. And for some reason I didn't expect that. How's the water look? <laughs> oh. Looks a little bit dirty, just on the top layer. Oh, he's doing it anyway. Oh, man. Is it nice? Yeah, it's so warm. Really, eh? Yeah, really warm. Mm. People are getting in, maybe we should get I, in. Yeah, you can. Yeah? I don't know that I want to get in. <laughs> it looks a little green for me. I feel like we found the place where Mongolians go for holiday. Because there's like people here who are really like enjoying the lake, like playing in it. I just like love hearing all their laughter. What a cool spot to come. Just like go with your holiday camping for however, however long. There's also a lot of people fishing here. So I bet you there's oh, yeah. a, some fish in the lake. This must be one of the very few places in Mongolia where you can get some fish. You're right. Because I have not seen any seafood. Any seafood, no. <laughs> the entire trip in Mongolia. There is no seafood here. <laughs> are you not going to go in? I don't think I'm going to go in. I feel the water looks a little murky and there's a lot of cows and cattle and yeah, horses. Yeah, there's a lot of livestock. And uh, I yeah. can't uh, shower it off, so I don't want to yeah. go to bed itchy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll just chill here, maybe yeah. fly the drone a little bit. Let's just relax. Read a book. <sighs> Have some, what did you get? Caramel popcorn. Caramel popcorn? Yeah, I want some. That's pretty good. It's like movie night, but at the lake. Look who changed his mind like two minutes after deciding he wasn't going in the water. Whoa. How is it? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was warm at the beginning, but as you get deeper, it's like the Mongolian Arctic. Are you really sure you should be in this? If this is the same like the horses going to cool off. <laughs> yeah, who knows? We're gonna have to shower you off or I'm scared of what will happen to your skin. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> ah, no, I think we'll just do as the Mongolians do. <laughs> who knows, maybe they're all doing a freshwater rinse after. <laughs> with pesto sauce and some roasted garlic and what's it called? Broccoli! Yeah. <laughs> roasted broccoli with garlic. Do you just want to see what the food looks like? There you go. Pasta with some cheese and some garlic and broccoli. <laughs> really roughing out of here. <laughs> so another thing I'm really loving about being here is that I feel like this is the kind of tourist attraction that in so many of the countries we've visited would be filled with like vendors and people trying to sell you boat tours and like skidoo thingies or sea do thingies and instead it's just us. Mm -hmm. You know you don't get like haggled, there's no, there's no one out here to haggle you. It's so nice, it just like really makes for a peaceful experience yeah. where you actually feel like you've got away. Like I don't think this place is very uh, popular as a tourist destination for foreigners but it seems like a very like a um, Busy place for uh, yeah. locals. Busy by Mongolian standards. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, I see one, there's one family beside us and like four over there, and I think that's a pretty packed lake already. <laughs> so we honestly didn't think that we would stay right next to the lake tonight because we thought that the mosquitoes would be too bad. And although there are a ton of bugs that are really coming out now that the sun's going down, they don't seem to be mosquitoes, like we're not getting bit. So we figured we're just gonna stay here. It's so beautiful. We've got a gorgeous sunset happening. Um, and of course we can sleep to the sound of the waves. So, time to set the tent one last time. Oh boy. We've got leftover vodka from our Gobi Desert trip. <laughs> now seems the right time to crack it open. Oh my God, we bought some cold Miranda. What is Miranda even? Is it like Orange Crush? I think it's like an orange carbon, uh, yeah. <laughs> Surprise! It's like orange crush. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. Or like a Fanta. Oh Similar. yeah, yeah, like a Fanta. Cheers, love. Ooh, Ooh strong. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
last night was probably my best sleep here in Mongolia. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. I don't know if it was the sound of the water or just the temperatures, just a lot cooler last night. Yeah. But it was just amazing. I really slept. I had a hard time getting up. Yeah, all the way until the cows woke us up at like six or seven o'clock this morning. Just all of a sudden I hear this moo. <laughs> I'm like, uh, under the window and there's a cow. So camels waking us up yesterday morning yeah. and cows waking us up today. Yeah. I just, you just never really know where you're going to get in Mongolia. What I also will say is that last night, we couldn't quite show in the camera because I was so tired, I didn't want to take photos anymore. It was just the most amazing night sky. In our previous trip in the Gobi Desert, I had some time to take some nice starry night time lapses, mm. which was just like a, for me anyways, as like a person who loves taking star photography, just yeah. one of my favorite things. But I think all that's left to do this morning is enjoy the scenery a little bit more, have some good coffee, get packed up, and get on the road. That's a wrap! Today's plan is going to be a little bit more tame than the last couple days. We are essentially just making our way all the way back to Umbatar, where we started the trip. Already look at the views. Look at this. Like, what uh, yeah. am I looking at? We're still driving around U Ugi Lake here, and it's so gorgeous. There are horses just in the water, just like having their morning bath, yeah. morning drink. It's so beautiful. What do you think, baby? Oh my gosh. We're I think that our three and a half or 350 kilometer drive is going to take a century because I keep having to go so slow for like goats and sheep and stuff. <laughs> like, this is going to just take so long. They're so cute, though, They're especially so the baby cute. ones. Yeah, I love them, but uh, they do make the drive real slow. <laughs> oh, okay. I think I cleared them all here. secluded part of the whole road trip so far and I don't think we realized so now of uh, course we have to find lunch somewhere and there's just nothing it's so vast and so green yeah but there's nothing except us and livestock the occasional other car I feel like you could probably go in so many different directions and not see anything for a long time I feel like it's the definition of driving Mongolia mm. But you know what's cool is that uh, the road is actually in way better shape than we expected. Like, way better shape. Ooh. Ooh, for that. Except for that <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but it is in way better shape. There's not as many potholes as I expected. And you're able to actually go fast, like 100 kilometers an hour. So we're making up for lost time going through the very dirt path we went on when we first started this drive. We were just thinking too that I think Mongolia has got to be like one of the best road trip countries. Yeah. And it's not something we realized before like arriving in Mongolia, but I honestly feel like we could stock this car full of food and water again and go for weeks. another like week. Yeah. Weeks. I think you could you could road trip around Mongolia for like an entire season. Yeah. Like you could easily spend like four months here just driving around, restocking, camping. I just can't believe how well this country is set up for a good road trip because not just the destination. That, like you know the things that you see there but also just the journey to get there it's the roads themselves have just been phenomenally beautiful definitely a journey just to drive here such an adventure hey look at this spot we found like the nicest rest stop in all of Mongolia actually I've seen a few of these we just haven't been to one yet oh I think I'm in the bus lanes Oh, that's the wrong one. This <laughs> <laughs> way. Oh, it's free for all. Oh, Excuse me, sir! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Go okay. down over there to the right, maybe. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> Guess I won't go there. <laughs> We're back to civilization. Oh my god, and terrible driving, sorry, including me. I'm really excited for this. Um, something to know about Mongolian food is that there's always so much meat involved. It's very hard to get anything that's not meat heavy here. How do I eat chicken thighs with chopsticks? And I got the lamb stroganoff. I'm not gonna lie, Nicole's looks a lot better than mine, but it's meat heavy anyways, and I'm totally happy with that. This is my kind of food. Well, we've already taken one of my chickens. Oh, and she gave me a piece of her chicken too. So, thanks, honey. Yeah. Oh. Everybody's on the hills. Look, it's just like a, it's like a race car derby. <laughs> oh man, so there was some construction on the road and basically the road just ended and then the sign, or not the sign, the, just the post made it seem like that you just go into the hills and basically everybody's just going into the hills and it's like, it just feels like utter chaos because there's no lanes or anything like that oh and gosh. everybody's for themselves. You got like three lanes of traffic going this way, three lanes going that way, people up over there, a Prius just booking it down. Oh Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, whether you are prepared for it or not, you are off-roading it today. Oh my gosh, like my <laughs> Well, everyone, welcome back to Ulan Batar. Back to Ulan Batar in the middle of a sand and dust storm, it seems. <laughs> this wraps up our 800 kilometers plus road trip around central Mongolia. It was honestly so beautiful and it absolutely blew us away. Yeah. And it also wraps up our last few days here in Mongolia. Yeah, if you've just joined us since we arrived here in Mongolia, please hit subscribe and come along for the adventure. We're full time travelers and our next destination is going to be Korea. See you in the next one. By the way, if you're wondering where on earth you would pee when you're out here and there's nothing around you, the easy answer is anywhere around you. Because <laughs> there's uh, usually no one coming by for, I don't know, however long, for a long time. So it's pretty easy to just find a spot, but it can be a little bit awkward if you time it wrong and someone does roll on by. In this case, we actually do have a few little bushes <laughs> that Nicole was making use of. But uh, sometimes there's really absolutely nothing out here. So, Just what do you think? Just peeing with the cows. Breezy? <laughs> Breezy. <laughs>